Hey guys, it's Shane from Now That I'm Older. I hope you're liking everything you're hearing on the Rogan's Hell Podcast Network. If you are, go to rogan'shell.com slash Amazon for all your shopping needs. It's not going to cost you anything extra. It's not going to look any different. But every time you use that link, you're going to be helping out the Rogan's Hell Podcast Network. So bookmark rogan'shell.com slash Amazon every time you need to buy something from Amazon. Thanks a lot. I see a little silhouette of a man, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the Fandango, Thunderbolts and Lightning, very, very frightening me, Galileo, 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 Galileo Figaro, Magnifico, welcome, my friends, to the powerful Nerdcast, you guys can't uh, guess, we're really excited about the Suicide Squad, that's right, the big new superhero villain flick coming out in 2016, which we are definitely going to talk about today. But we have a number of awesome topics. Suicide Squad, the deaths of some big greats like David Bowie, Alan Rickman, and freaking Glenn Fry from the freaking Eagles of all people. We got this awesome episode of One Piece to discuss, and we just don't have the time. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Suicide Squad. Christian, what do you think of the trailer? Well, that is exactly how many syllables that has, Corey. Perfect. (laughs) So honestly, this trailer... I was like, okay, I'm ready for some new footage. I'm ready to see what they got. Because before we kind of just had a teaser, we had some like badass walking shots, mm-hmm. some like quick action, and then they cut away, fade to black. But this time, I feel like we actually got to know the cast that we're actually going to see in this film. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harley Quinn immediately stole it for me. Margot Robbie and, from Wolf of Wall Street. Who, to me, and she looked way hotter in Wolf of Wall Street because they were trying to play that up. Mm-hmm. I remember like Leonardo. Now she's kind of like that trashy hot. Yeah, she's like... You know, you wouldn't bring her home to mom, (laughs) that kind of hot. But I I just uh, immediately thought that she was interesting. I think the samurai chick is really cool. Uh, Katana, I think is her name. That's very creative. Yeah, I know. (laughs) You got to realize this is a character who is a uh, product, I believive, of the uh, the 80s. But don't quote me on that. Yeah, so that was cool. Will Smith, not as big of a presence in the trailer as i was expecting in some ways exact opposite for me really i think he's uh definitely the leading man of the entire trailer well i think that he's definitely the leading man of the film but i just thought in this trailer he didn't like seem does he seem like not evil to you like that's the thing uh his character who goes by the name of deadshot he's kind of like an anti-hero you know he's he's a mercenary he does wet work he he does uh, murder for hire he doesn't really see it as bad and you can definitely tell from a lot of the shots of the trailer that he longs for a life outside of the prison walls yeah like they're just uh so happy to get out they're like yeah let's do this Mm -hmm. let's take on this suicide mission let's Mm -hmm. become a suicide squad Mm -hmm. you know mission impossible but without tom cruise (laughs) not (laughs) yeah tom cruise and so it's kind of exciting to see uh this actually play out and look real Mm -hmm. a few more shots of the joker Mm -hmm. yes a lot more of the joker still Um, did did you get that they're outright saying he's the main villain of the movie that's the thing they still Um, outright say that yeah uh, no shots of batman even though we know he's in the film oh yeah they they spoiled that a long time definitely going to be in a film this is a part of what is dc is calling their extended universe Mm -hmm. uh they didn't want to copy the name of you know call it the dcu or anything uh the they, DCU, yeah, they have their very own name here because they're getting ready to set up all these movies and i mean in the next two years i mean they already announced dominated. wonder woman yeah. like in the same they haven't even released batman vs superman and they're already got this footage of the wonder woman trailer but we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves yeah, yeah yeah uh let's get back to suicide squad um the biggest thing about this trailer like you said is uh, a clear-cut villain for the film the obvious answer is the joker he's clearly going to play a huge presence in the film i think a lot of his uh footage is actually going to be from flashbacks uh, especially with the scenes of him and Harley actually uh, maybe even getting stopped by Batman with Harley going oh, to jail. Oh, it makes complete sense. Maybe mm-hmm. Batman stops him. That's where they all get arrested. Mm-hmm. Joker escapes, of course, but Harley Quinn ends up getting captured. And this movie is in many ways going to be like the big reunion between Harley Quinn and the Joker, like sort of building up to that. But there's this shot in the trailer at the very end where they're in this subway and there is just something destroying a sub, like or sub, <laughs> destroying a, a car down there by like ripping it in half. And it has like these. It's big- Jared. It's, I hope it's not. That would be really fucking terrifying, um, especially for the young children on board. But like. Uh, it's some sort of like weird monster or creature with like these long tendril like arms. It's a super quick shot and you see it twice in the trailer. 
Uh, one where the subway car is about to smash right into it, and it's just destroying it. And then another one where you can see its arm sort of, like, stretching out, like, uh, in the, uh, the underground tunnel and everything. It looks like some of the other random members of the Suicide Squad are battling it. Uh, I think that's Will Smith as Deadshot who's actually doing that. It, it goes real quick, but it's one of those things I watch because, you know, I watch a trailer and then I watch it, like, ten more times. Cause... Yeah, yeah, it's like one of those trailers you, like, watch, and then mm -hmm. you're like, uh, okay, I think I saw, like, 30 things in that trailer, so <laughs> let me go back and rewatch that. Because there's so that. many little details, and they, and they do a pretty good job, too, of focusing on all the members. Like, obviously, we're harping a little bit on uh, Deadshot and Harley Quinn and Joker, but, our, I mean, they really are the big names uh, for this movie. Deadshot more so, I think, for who's playing him, Will Smith. Uh, you just, you can't ignore his presence. Uh, but then you have characters like Captain Boomerang. Just, uh, what a great, classic, Silver Age kind of comic book name. Uh, he's that guy who actually here at the very beginning of the trailer, who's locked up and super pissed off. Uh, like his namesake, his powers involve using a boomerang. Not so much powers, just the fact that he's really good with using a boomerang, which they don't really show in the trailer as far as I know. Um, and then there's just a lot of dudes... With guns. Yeah. A lot of dudes with guns. I mean, obviously, guns. Like, uh, obviously Deadshot. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, like, every other guy you see has a has a machine gun. Mm -hmm. Even the Joker has a machine oh, gun. yeah. I mean, well, the Joker, anything's a weapon to him. Yeah, everything is. There's also, we're forgetting a few characters. I don't know their names. So I'm sure you're mm -hmm. filming me in. Sure. Guy that can shoot fire. Uh, I think that's El Diablo. El Diablo. Yes. Makes sense. Devil fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's based more on the uh, the newer version of the character who's been introduced in the uh, the last decade. And then we got the crocodile. We have the crocodile, otherwise known as Killer Croc. Killer um, Croc. Who, I think, honestly, uh, next to Harley Quinn and Joker is probably the biggest villain name that you could drop. The thing about Killer Croc, though, is he's a really popular Batman villain, um, but he's... There's not much to the character. You know, he's, he's basically he's, muscle. He's a big he's kinda like the Bane of that series. In a way. But Bane's smarter. Yeah. You know? Oh, Bane's infinitely smarter. In fact, a little fun fact. Um, when Bane was introduced into the Batman comics, one of the first people that Bane actually went after was Killer Croc. Uh, and he fought him in the sewers and completely like broke both of his arms and left him for dead. Oh, wow. Uh, so that, again, shows how powerful Bane is. But Killer Croc is one of those characters I can't wait to see. Almost surprised they didn't put Bane in this movie, but maybe um, it's because it's I following I, the I'm other. I'm about Bane out, you know, because I still don't think they've done. I mean, I would like to see Bane. Because I still don't think they've done a perfect version of the character to screen yet. Uh -huh. um, you know, the first version, obviously, he's just a Frankenstein monster. Um, but he had the powers. And then you had Tom Hardy, who played him in Dark Knight Rises, um, who Who's did close. a better job at the yeah. character. But he didn't have the powers. So, like, if they could have just combined those two things together, we might have something really special. Yeah, but the, that 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 uh, Batman series, the uh, Nolanverse Batman, was mm. very much grounded in reality. It was. So it, they can't give, like, some random character ridiculous steroid mm -hmm. superpowers, you know? Like, mm. it'd just be weird. That was probably my only problem with the Nolanverse Batman movies. They just they didn't embrace the wackiness and the weirdness of the comics. Also, which... you know, the Joker just doesn't have a big cut or a big like he they don't accent, accentuate his mouth except with the 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 platinum teeth yeah like they don't have fake scars mm -hmm. or they don't have prosthetic looking you know they just i don't not even in the makeup mm -hmm. you know so i find that uh that joker kind of strange looking in mm -hmm. in that way but also the neon green hair looks ridiculous in real life yeah it's just one of those things that's a little weird to I'll transfer. I'll say this, I'm warming up to the Joker a lot more after seeing the trailer. I still think the, the tattoos are stupid and just completely unneeded. I don't even mind the uh, the brand new, like, the fillings in his teeth and everything. In the fact, platinum I teeth? love that one shot uh, of him wearing the tuxedo. That's and shooting the gun? So classic Joker right there. That's totally something he would do. Um, I love the shot of him falling into the vat of chemicals, which may or may not be... The place origin? that he uh, had his origins. Maybe this is where he transforms Harley Quinn into like someone crazy. Okay. Um, but I like that it's going back to that. That might even be like a whole flashback, maybe involving something with Batman. Because uh, we still don't know like how much of a role he is going to play in the movie. He will appear, but it's definitely going to be downplayed. Um, and that's just the other key reason why this movie is just so damn refreshing. All these unknown characters... Uh, and the fact that they're villains, like th that's the best thing. Uh, other characters, uh, the character of Katana, yes, uh, she's the chick with the uh, the enchanted uh, samurai sword. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really cool about her is like her powers. Like when she kills someone, like she literally, uh, to my knowledge, she absorbs their souls into her blade. And there's a shot where she's holding her sword up, and there's clearly some sort of energy. Like an aura smoke thing coming mm -hmm. off of it. It's either yeah. coming off the blade or going inside of it. And before that shot even appears, there is this shot of Killer Croc uh, actually attacking her, like just super pissed off. 
And I wonder if they're going to have the balls to kill off Killer Croc in this movie, which if they do... Well, if you look closely at that smoke, I'm watching a gif of that one scene over and over again. Mm-hmm. There's skulls. That's what that is. That oh, smoke I is actually skulls. That. Well, it probably happened super fast. This is like yeah. a gif that was like yeah. the, those few frames were taken and then slowed down, mm-hmm. you know, just so you That's can That's a really cool absorb. detail, though. Yeah. I like, like that. Um, you know, your soul her... is mine. <laughs> Freaking <I> can... <laughs> Shang soul. Freaking let's get a Mortal Kombat versus uh, DC Universe movie. They made a video game. Let's oh, just bring man. it to the screen. No. That'd be great. Um, Mortal Kombat versus Aliens, you know, that would be cool too. I still, me, me and my friend Ben were talking the other week, like, what versus movies could there be? I still think the coolest one would be uh, Predator versus Jason. Predator versus Jason? Yeah. The problem is, I Jason's think the story like unbeatable. Itself. Hmm? Jason's kind of unbeatable. Yeah, in a way, but I mean, against the Predator, you know, I mean, just. You could rip his arms off and shit. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. And I, then wait a I week imagine and they grow be, back. Yeah. <laughs> It would probably end kind of like, uh, you know, Freddy versus Jason, where it's just a big ambiguous explosion where you don't really know who wins. Uh, but getting back again to who's Suicide the Entra- Squad, Enchantress? The Enchantress is probably one of the more unknown characters. Uh, I don't even really know much about her character aside from the fact that she seems to be possessed by a witch, and she seems to have some crazy supernatural powers. Probably the most supernatural member of the group, and uh, I-, I really don't know what they're going to do with her. I'm looking her up on Wikipedia right mm. now. Um, but she looks really cool, super creepy. There's a lot of shots of her in the trailer, like before she becomes the enchantress. Like there's a shot of her like sitting in this like black water, like up against like a gravestone. Like there's going to be some imagery in this movie. That's really crazy. And, uh, to sort of like a juxtaposition to all of that is the song they chose for the trailer, which was uh queen's classic Bohemian Rhapsody where our intro comes from, this which, week. um, I really liked the, the song one. I love the song period. I've always really enjoyed that song a lot. Um, I think it fits with the trailer, but uh, a comparison that a lot of people are making to it, um, which I think is actually fairly accurate. Um, it sort of gives this movie, this like guardians of the galaxy vibe. You know how, like, they had the... Uh, yeah, like a song that doesn't necessarily fit, but still awesome, mm-hmm. and then they cut the trailer to it, but it still gives it... Hooked on a feeling. Yeah, but it know? gives it a... Every time I hear that song now, I just think you of think Guardians. It, exactly. I don't uh, think they're going like to be able how, to do that, though. You know, with Bohemian the, Rhapsody was a really popular song, uh, even before Wayne's World. Uh, and I always thought it was funny in there, but uh, this is another one of those movies where it might be defined by that song. Um, even if the song appears in the movie at all, uh, is sort of unknown. But I really liked the decision. It just sort of showed... It's a movie that can go to dark places, but it can also have sort of like a sick sense of humor about it, which I think is really awesome. Uh, if only it were rated R. That's the only thing. You know, you got Deadpool coming out, which is going to be a hard R, and then you got this one coming out, and it's just a you know a hard PG thirteen. But uh, you know, they they got to sell merch. Uh, that's here's the one thing, man. Well, they can throw a lot of guns in there. Yeah. That's one thing they're doing, and they're going to have fun battles, mm-hmm. and they just got to get good with the writing, and then maybe they can still pull it off. But mm-hmm. uh. uh that is a sad thing. I never really realized that it's only mm-hmm. PG-13. Uh, what I really love about the trailer, too, is that unlike Batman versus Superman, uh, the whole plot isn't really given out. Like, you know that these villains are going to have to be forced to work together as a, uh, a task force, and they're going to have to do something that may involve the Joker and might involve something else. We don't really know, like, why they're having the team up. Which and is, maybe uh, maybe the Joker isn't the main bad guy. They just yeah. use him in flashbacks. And then the big tentacle monster Hellboy thing is the whatever the hell that yeah, is. Yeah, I hope it's something unique and not just another throwaway villain thing we have to kill at the end of the movie. Well, that's how they join. That's how they become a team, Corey. You know, they all cut off one tentacle. Each. I mean, if we're up to me though, like every Suicide Squad, like if they do sequels to these, which I think would be fun, um, they should mix up the team as much as humanly possible. Uh, cause, yeah, it's like you've got the scenario built now. Just throw in new characters every time. I mean, there's so many amazing DC villains that they can team up together. Um, you know, the Suicide Squad comics, the, uh, the characters, they've existed in comics for a really long time, I think since the 70s. Uh, they've become a lot more relevant in the late 80s and beyond, uh, but almost every single iteration of the team has been, like, different people. But you've also had other people who had shown up and been on the team all, like, Deadshot has been on the team a ton. Uh, before the movie even came out, uh, I was kind of hoping that the character of Deathstroke, uh, was going to end up being a part of the film. And as far as I know, he's not, um, which is kind of a shame. I just think he's one of the coolest DC characters ever. Basically, the more competent, badass version of Deadpool without the regenerative powers. Yeah, it's kind of like the, a serious version of Deadpool. Yeah, I mean, and they've been compared to each other because, you know, De- Deathstroke's name is Slade Wilson, and then Deadpool's name is Wade Wilson. I mean, there's an obvious... Wasn't Deadpool kind of based off him, too? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. in many ways kind of like just a stark contrast parody of that character. 
um, only superficially similar and kind of like what their outfits kind of look like. Yeah, and in their uh, not their origins, but you know their names. Mm-hmm. But there's but then in the same way, they're also nothing alike. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of interesting. Yeah, but uh, overall, I thought that trailer was awesome, and yeah. I watched it way I was too many times. Really surprised how much I enjoyed it. So much so that it is my favorite, like or most anticipated superhero movie of more than Deadpool. More than Deadpool. Okay, I have to yeah, just completely I really disagree with you. Really can't believe that. I'm just I when you said more than uh, Batman Superman, I was like, okay, I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause the wonder woman thing and, uh, uh, what, who's the villain again in that? The, uh, doomsday, doomsday Who, you know, um, if they're making more of these movies, doomsday will return. They're not going to finish him off in that movie. They've already said that he's going to have a role. To nah, play. They're going to banish him to another dimension or something. Mm-hmm. That's and what maybe when he returns, he'll look like actual doomsday. We'll have to see. This, I'm still going to, this isn't even his final form, Corey. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> fucking introducing Dragon Ball rules into the DC universe. I'm not sure how I feel about it. My, why don't you just, just make Doomsday look like Doomsday? I don't know. Um, what do you think about Joker with all the knives? Jo- oh, that shot where uh, he's it, like, like spins up as yeah. he has all the knives. I love that shot. Him. It totally just the Joker would do something like that. It just it's completely unnecessary and ridiculous and over the top, which is exactly what the Joker is. And every time I see more footage of Jared Leto as the character, I love it because it's so different from Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger. Every Joker that's ever been portrayed is different from one another, and they all still have so much in common. That is fucking amazing. I that love is that. true. That is true. They're all very different. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, I'm just excited to see this Joker, because there's one thing I learned from the Heath Ledger, Leather joke, Leather, whatever. You know who I'm talking about. Heath Leather. Heath Leather's Joker. It's that you don't judge their performance until you see it, because mm-hmm. everyone was pissed that oh, they were making dude. a new Joker. I remember Joker. reading that for the front. I was like, that, the dude from A Knight's Tale? The dude, really? <laughs> the dude from 20 Things I Hate About Her or whatever like, it was? How the fuck? And then he just he totally became that character. He, um, that's like his legacy. Mm-hmm. So, Which you know. I think that's what Leto's doing kind of in his own way. Um, he really is absorbing himself into that character and becoming the Joker. I love that they're not shy about like, you know, the, the white makeup and the green hair. Like that is the some of the greenest green Joker hair I've ever seen. And it I is. love it. I love it because you see him and you're like, there are people who are going to see this trailer for the first time, don't even know anything about it, and they're going to be like, wait a minute, that's the fucking Joker. This is like a DC movie, and they're going to like start to realize, oh shit, this is awesome. Yeah. And that's what's going to bring people into audiences too. I'm surprised they didn't even show a quick shot of Batman. I thought that would have been like an easy, hey, we got to get some more butts and seats, at least reassure them, you know, show them with a, you know, from behind, maybe flying through the city or doing something. Uh, they didn't do anything with Batman in the trailer. And maybe that's they a good thing. Nothing. Maybe they're saving something. Maybe the movie's going to end with Batman just beating the fuck out of all these guys. Just like gnarly Batfleck comes in. You bleed. Ah, and then he just like destroys <laughs> all of them. Maybe maybe that'll happen. I don't know. Maybe there will be some sort of tie-in to, to Batman versus Superman. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm more interested in this, though, than Which any comes DC out first? Movie. Um, you know, I'm not actually sure to be honest. I don't know which one comes um, out first. I want to say Batman versus Superman, but it I makes might sense because that's been promoted more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you would think that would happen, but uh, I'm not really sure to be perfectly honest. Um, can you look that up for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll look that up. But I totally loved that trailer so much. Everybody seems to be in agreement that it's a pretty good trailer. Um, you know that. With uh, Batman versus Superman, they've also just shown some brand new footage of Wonder Woman, which I can't believe they're already filming. Uh, they're making some minor changes to the character, but it's one of those situations. August fifth uh, for Suicide Squad. Okay, so that's after uh, Batman. Really, it's that far away. Yeah. Damn, it's a shame that we have to wait so long. <laughs> I was like, oh man, that's only a couple. No, no, no. It's that's a while. Practically at the end of the year. It's the first month of the uh, year, Corey. But that's definitely, it's only a couple of months after uh, Batman vs. Superman. So we're not going to have to wait too long to get some more uh, DC action, which is great. Um, they've also revealed not just Wonder Woman, but there was uh, some concept art that was revealed of the Justice League. Like all together, standing side by side, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, the new version of The Flash. Um, we also have the character of Cyborg, who is a, a member of the Teen Titans, um, which basically his name dis- is an exact like description of what he is and he what is his powers a, are. He yeah. is a literal Cyborg character. He's Frankie. Um, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> personalities aren't that <laughs> drastic either. Um, Cyborg is a character I cannot wait to see in action. Um, and then uh, the last member of the team, uh, Aquaman, of course. Uh, played by the dude from uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones. 
Um, One of the most hardcore guys, hardcore looking actors, but yet the only other movie he was in besides Game of Thrones, I think, uh, recently anyway, mm -hmm. uh, was the remake of the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie back in the day. What was it? What he was a barbarian? Conan. Conan. Which never, tanked. I never, <laughs> I never actually saw tanked. the remake. Yeah, it tanked. Yeah. And it's horrible. Like, mm. go watch that movie. Like, just go watch the final fight scene. It is horrible. Like, really? It's just bad. What's so bad about it? The CG's bad. It's not believable. I remember in the trailers, I saw him fighting some sort of, I think it was a snake. Or there was some sort of CG thing he was fighting. And I was just I like. I bet they thought they could get away with bad because back in the day, Conan was not the most impressive film in the sense of like but it kicks ass yeah it was believable enough and it was back in the day where all that stuff was kind of yeah. new so you know and he had darth vader in it so it was nice <laughs> you know it was good it was good stuff was that before yeah. star Wars? no obviously not before star oh Wars. no that was after star Wars. yeah yeah so yeah. everyone knew who that guy was but uh it's just sort of uh it's just so bad man like you should just watch one fight scene from that movie i Let might need see. to see what that's all about I'm, I'm not paying to see it i will find it somewhere online or hopefully it'll appear on tv at some point i just i had no interest when i heard that just because i was like uh, uh you know, it didn't work out for total recall it didn't work out for robocop it's probably not going to work out for freaking so conan bad. the barbarian it's so bad i mean is it as bad as conan the conqueror i believe which was the sequel to conan the barbarian but didn't that have arnold in it it did have arnold but it wasn't the greatest it was just it was very different from the first movie it was like going from an r-rated movie to a pg movie Oh yeah, that, that was kind of the, the the vibe of it because that first Conan movie is just it's it's metal. I forget the what the, uh, of the word. I forget what the uh, actor's name is that he's fighting, but I know I've seen this guy in something. Mm -hmm. But the main bad guy is actually a really good actor. I've seen him in quite a few things. Let me uh let me look that guy up. And that's a shame because uh you know that guy obviously I think he can play those type of roles well. Yeah, that's why um, I was like, why'd you fucking make this suck, guys? Mm -hmm. Like this could have been good. But then, you, of course, you have Aquaman, who is a very misunderstood DC character. A character who has been burned by history, and mostly because of his uh, portrayal oh, in the Oh, Stephen Friends. Lang, the guy that played uh, in Avatar. He was the uh, he was the commander that fought at the end of the movie. And the, the guy robot. in the mech? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's a badass. The only part of the movie I liked. Yeah, he's a badass. <laughs> so when he played the big bad guy against that guy, mm -hmm. I wanted to like that. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, but then the special effects suck, and you don't <laughs> care, and it's just like, Fuck this movie. Damn, that sucks. Yeah, it really wasn't good at all. I mean, I never... This is... To, I mean, it makes sense. This is the first time I think I've ever heard anyone talking about the Conan remake because you actually talking about it right now. I just caught it on TV and it mm. sucks so bad. Just... I don't know. Maybe maybe it was edited. Maybe that made it worse. Maybe it's just a shitty movie in general. I'm going to have to go for the, uh, the latter. It's... Don't watch it. Anyway, let's change the subject. I don't even want to waste any more time on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, the... All this new shit that's been teased with the DC Universe. They're trying to catch up with Marvel big time because Marvel has huge plans coming up as well. We're definitely going to see some big competitions going up between these companies in the next couple years with all their big movies. Um, Wonder Woman, uh, Batman vs. Superman, Justice Leagues Part 1 and 2. We have a Green Lantern movie, which is going to be coming out eventually. Aquaman's getting his own film. The Flash is getting his own movie. They're just going to be going completely crazy with a lot of these characters. I can't wait to see how they are going to freaking handle it. And I hope they have some good directors behind all of these. Um, I'm, I'm st I am still am just not that excited for Batman vs. Superman. I really wish I was more excited for it. Maybe it's because I'm burnt out on Batman. Maybe it's because... You know, it is a big deal that they're appearing on screen for the very first time, like on a big movie screen. But it wouldn't be the first time we've seen the characters interact together in other mediums, you know, TV, comic books, obviously. So uh, I just I'm just going to have to wait and see that that trailer, that second one burned me with Doomsday. Like it really like just got under my skin. In a you know, way. more so Wonder Woman pissed me off. I was like, because I knew she was going to be in there. But just the way I feel like they are hamstringing her into that film mm -hmm. just to start their their dc universe they're just like hurry get more fucking characters in there get the suicide squad out there we got to catch up i mean i would have been happy with just batman superman and lex luther i would have been happy right there just concentrate on those characters Make those sure are the, the, the story those works. are supposed to be your keystone characters of that universe so mm -hmm. why aren't you just giving them their own movie why do you got to hamstring in other characters and aquaman is supposed to be in that movie too mm -hmm. the fuck man yeah like, not to mention cyborg pre becoming a cyborg Oh. So, the, you know, Batman versus Superman might as well just be like re-subtitled, you know, the beginning of all this DC shit. It's called shit, Rise bitches. of Justice. 
Yeah. That's what it should be Dawn called. Dawn of Justice. Or yeah, John, Rise, Dawn, Reboot, re- whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, what What's the other uh, Resurgence? Resurgence, what, what which is term? the name of Independence Day and the Godzilla movie coming uh, out next year. Reloaded. What's another Matrix title? They have, uh, uh, they have all those terms. <laughs> what do they call it? Respawn? Revolutions. Revolutions. Any of this. Revolutions of Justice. Return the po- of the King. Revenge of the Jedi. <laughs> Revenge yeah. of the Sith. The point is that uh it should just be called that rise of justice or whatever the fuck it's called the point is that it's it's getting a little uh diluted and Mm -hmm. it's a little sad but they gotta play catch up they don't get to test the waters with an iron man movie first see how Mm -hmm. that went and then no they're they're going right for the crossover yeah well i mean i guess you could say man of steel what was their iron man but yes and i like that a lot i know you don't but Mm -hmm. i liked that movie a lot it's growing on me um i just think it's a little heavy-handed at times I don't know. Like they just—they try Superman. to get man. He's fucking white bread Boy Scout guy. Yes, so. it's just they try to get too serious with it, and I don't like the the style of the storytelling. How it's like uh, they go to flashbacks all the time, and just like show us the flashbacks and then show us the future story. That's all I want to see. You're not fucking Quentin Tarantino, all right? This isn't Chapter Seven. Superman fights again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, just just not my type of thing. Uh, but thing. I do. I will say this. I I loved the action scenes in those movies. Uh, just watch this generic piece this? of shit oh this is conan the barbarian this is when they take back a pirate ship okay you know? all right and so this dude's this all right so this is a uh, call drago kyle drago yeah, yeah. Aquaman. carl aquaman <laughs> just all right i'm yeah. not really seeing anything impressive it looks so like far. a bad copy of pirates basically i was about i was about to say when you showed this to me i was like <laughs> is this like a new pirates of the caribbean or you know what is this shit what just, was that i don't know Did you see that it's a stunt oh my god I know that this is a uh, audio only podcast, guys, and you can't really see what we're looking at. But it's just uh, it's a uh, the one named uh, Conan the Barbarian eight out of nine movie clip uh, oh, attack on ship. And yeah, there there is nothing in this movie that says interesting or this original. Says interesting or original or like. This oh look, they spin the wheel to kill a guy. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> That's a shame. And then they all high five. <laughs> Damn, I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I don't even think he. I don't even really think he looks like a good Conan. Uh, to be honest, he's big. And I mean, yeah, he's muscular. You know, I mean, it's just Arnold is just so legendary as that character, and you know, Conan didn't even originate like from the movie or anything. I believe they're novels and comic books. Uh, yeah, they were they comics. Into that, so. Uh, but again, I don't know much about Conan aside from the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, in particular the original one that came out, because I've seen that movie way too many damn times. A movie that I should not have been allowed to see when I was younger, but I saw it. We could have a whole podcast about the movies we were not allowed to see. <laughs> Seriously. But saw anyway as children. Mm-hmm. They didn't know back then, though. Nah. There was less social media. There was less... Pro- oh, you want to rent this movie called uh, Aliens? Okay. Yeah. Eight years old. Nightmares. Fucking forever. Horrifying. <laughs> the, the first time you see that alien dude, I ran. They like, mostly come out at night. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. This might as well be called the quote cast. Eh, you know? Basically. But, uh, yeah, I, I loved the trailer. It's definitely the coolest news, I think, that's come out over the course of the last 24 hours. I'm I really am still more it. excited for Deadpool. I make uh, strong predictions that is going to be the best movie, superhero movie, this year. Mm, that is a bold, bold statement. The problem is it's coming out really early in the year. Yeah, so it's gonna, it's definitely getting a head start on everyone, which I think is its biggest advantage. And, and the fact that it's coming out during a time where really nothing else is coming out. Yep, it did know? not try to come out during Star Wars. Thank no. God it didn't try to come mm-hmm. out during Star Wars. You can't compete with that shit right now unless the you're called only, The Revenant. Yeah, that was about the only movie that even stood a chance was The Revenant. Mm-hmm. Do you want to get into the, the Oscars uh, bullcrap? The... <laughs> whatever will smith's wife you mean the the no, the no pasties at the oscars no only pasties at the oscars only pasties at the oscars yeah like uh, i mean i just don't have much of an opinion about it i uh, mean come on become a social justice warrior Corey. I don't, I, that's the thing i'm just i'm so indifferent about it because they're mentioning you know obviously here's the big controversy is yeah get everyone up to speed the uh the oscars this year which are coming up uh every single actor or movie that's been nominated features only uh, white actors and uh, a lot of people in Hollywood feel that that's very unfair and uh, might even possibly be an act of racism. Uh, you know, big director Spike Lee, uh, he of course spoke out about it. Will Smith's wife, 
Uh, Jada Pinkett Smith uh, also spoke out about that. And uh, Chris Rock, who is supposed to be the host of the Oscars, is catching a lot of heat uh, from his fellow oh, Chris colleagues. Rock. Yeah. Oh, I didn't and, know he was. Uh, and, and a lot of the uh, they're telling him, hey, Chris, you need to step down. You can't do this. Um, if anything, Chris Rock needs to host the damn show and he needs to bring attention to it. If anything, because he's the type of guy who can get away with making jokes about that type of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, what's one of his legendary bits is uh, the uh, the difference between oh, I, can't, I don't even remember. But the point is, he touches on racial humor mm. all the time, all the time. Yeah. Like some of his biggest bits are like that. Yeah. And, uh, OK, you know, you got some pretty good uh, uh, diversity here. You got Brian Cranston, white, Matt mm -hmm. Damon, white, Michael Fassbender, white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get it. You mm -hmm. glance at this. You could say that. Yeah. But Brian Cranston is the shit. Matt Damon. He's a good actor, but I could care less. Michael Fassbender is kind of like my my dude crush. I think he's awesome every time he's in something. I, you know, you heard it here, folks. I'm into it. And Leonardo DiCaprio. What I don't need to say much about Dude that Dude deserves guy. it, man. He just deserves it. He's, he's seen... been acting his ass off for decades. Jennifer Lawrence, I don't know why the fuck anyone really cares about her. <laughs> Get over that. These other people, I don't really know. Kate... Jennifer Lawrence, isn't that a Hunger Games check? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. My she, mom loves those movies. She just topped out too early. Yeah. You know, like, I think I saw this comedian. It says, once you, if you're like world famous and rich as shit at like 20 what the hell else is there to achieve you know you might as well do the heroin right in your eyeball you know and just my answer to that is leonardo dicaprio he he figured it out you're right yeah. he i mean did he found this it. formula i mean you, you, there was a small amount of time where he kind of disappeared but then once the 2000s hit like hit 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 amazing movie he keeps on doing it uh, if fastbender's your crush then leonardo <laughs> dicaprio's mine that's your dude crush well yeah. i'm just saying uh like I don't have a problem with these nominees that a lot of people said the movies that should have been considered were first of all, I don't remember the straight name. out of Compton. That was a good bio biographical piece. Good I, movie. I get it. But Creed not that's fucking Rocky eight, man. What the I, fuck I are you think, talking about? I think about? really the whole thing with Creed is that they are kissing some Stallone ass a little bit. Do you think Stallone's that's it? Stallone's getting a little older. And they're trying to get him something? the same young buck that he used to be. The Expendables, I think, are done. I don't know if they're making a sequel. If they are, power to Stallone for doing them. Dude's those got, are hard to do. Yeah, I mean, that, that th those are very physical, uh, physically demanding films. Um, but, like, there's just... What was the Idris Elba movie um, where he's playing, like, I think a warlord or something? Uh, the first time I even heard of that movie, but now that I heard about it, I want to see it. Because yeah. Idris Elba is fucking bad ass. Is that he dude the, uh, is not only cool, he's a great actor. Is that we're canceling the apocalypse? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pacific Rim, that's where it goes back to. <laughs> but no. Or The Office, you know? <laughs> uh, the <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware of the effect I have on women. You know, I just remember how it cuts to that when they're doing the confessionals. He had a, uh, a small role in uh, the visually but still disappointing Prometheus. He was the uh, remember he was the captain of Prometheus. Yeah, he's the one that he's uh, the guy who flew the damn ship. I was gonna say fucked the uh... <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Jada Jones. No, not Catherine Jada Jones. What's her name? I forget. Was it name. Naomi Watts? No, it's the main bitch that's in Mad Max. Uh, Why are we forgetting Mad Max? I don't know. It's hard to keep up with. So, Celise Theron? Uh, Charlize Theron? Charlize? I am horrible with names, people. Charlize I'm so... Theron. <laughs> she got it good in that movie. She oh, got yeah. out of her space pod, you know, stretched a little bit, did yeah. some push-ups. Eat yourself will play a, uh, an accordion. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how he hit on her. He was playing an accordion. He was. Look, man, an accordion ain't getting you any pussy. So no. if you're working an accordion... You Unless to... you're Idris Elba... Or Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> You're not pulling any wound. In which case, who knows? What, does Weird Al Yankovic have kids? Like, is he married? Yeah, he's got a daughter. and uh, They all have, like, long, I don't like, know. curly hair I've never and play accordions Googled, and play polka. I've never Googled Weird Al Yankovic's family. I've never put that in Google Images. <laughs> I'm sure it's out there. I see that. I'm not doing it. I, I like to imagine they all look like clones of like just clones of Weird Al. Even his wife kind of looks like him, just oh you know, without God. the mustache. Oh or no, God. he doesn't do the mustache anymore. No, that was like '80s, early '90s. Yeah, he goes clean now. Yeah, he's just uh, he's also vegetarian, which I find funny. He doesn't talk about it a lot, but I, I heard about it in mm -hmm. an interview. Hey, I like that. He's not pretentious about it. He's not. Uh, so, uh, best cinematography. This is the one in the category of the Oscars I find interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hateful Eight. 
Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Fucking Quentin Tarantino rocking it. He was so fucking drunk at not the Oscars, but at the uh, Golden Globes. Never saw that. Heard it was funny. He was either though. drunk or he was high on something. <laughs> you know. It's Quentin like, Tarantino. He, he can get away with it. It's, it's like you kind of expect it. You mm-hmm. know, you kind of expect it at this point. Then we got Mad Max, which was really visually like powerful as I'm fuck. surprised they even recognize that movie. Really? Yeah, just because it's, you know. Well, for it, cinematography. That's, yeah. the, that's the category it's in. And then The Revenant, which is amazing. And then mm-hmm. you got Sicario, which is the uh, Roger Deakins uh, mm-hmm. film, which that guy, rock star. And then there's Carol, which I don't even know what that is, but mm-hmm. it's probably a pretty movie. Um, but we saw The Revenant like mm-hmm. a week ago. Yeah. And great. the same cinematographer that did Birdman, yeah. which obviously shows like the opening shots, like one long shot forever. Oh, such a great shot. Yeah. Like the, the damn... opening of that movie's boss, man. Ugh, the whole thing is scary. You know? Yeah. I, originally, I loved it when I first saw it. The next day, I was like, "That was that movie was kind of pretentious and kind of into itself." And then I got over it, and I said, "Don't judge it so hard. It's just trying to do a movie in a different way." Mm-hmm. And it did it well. I mean, and it has that redhead dude that's in fucking everything now. <laughs> yeah, he starred. Uh, I remember we were walking out like, "God, this dude just started in like three powerful, amazing movies, movies and they're back all to back so to different back. from one another too." Yeah, he did. Ex he played. He played. He what's, played his, a, what's the actor's name? Do you remember? I don't. I I'll feel really. I think maybe it's Sam Gleason. Maybe. Uh, I'm just spitballing here. That's what. That's the only thing I might remember. But what I loved is, you know, he's a really good actor. Like all the characters that he played in these three movies, I loved. They're all so different from one another. Uh, the character of David from Ex Machina, just sort of like this meek, like super smart scientist who had good intentions and ended up getting screwed over. Then he played this like super hardcore, almost Nazi-like commander for the First Order in Star Wars, Domal Gleason. Yeah, Domal Gleason. Domal Gleason. And then, uh, and then he played that just uh, the expedition leader in The Revenant, and just totally sold it. He was like one of the few people on uh, Leonardo's character's like side throughout the entire film. And he was the leader, so you know. Mm-hmm. And he's in also that movie Love, Love Actually, which is a, a like time travel sort of weird movie, which is mm-hmm. very weird. Like he's just in a ton of good stuff, you know, like The Revenant, Ex Machina, Harry Potter, Escape from Grind. I forget how to say that. Oh, that's a short. But still, like he's in just like powerful movies yeah. all the time like and he came out of kind of nowhere in my opinion I, i'd never se- I, I couldn't have recognized him before ex machina yeah and then all but of a sudden- again i think it's good when you like i didn't even know that like that was the guy from the revenant until you like hey, dude that's that's fucking general hooks man. <laughs> right there too and i was just like oh shit the like every everything. single time he looks completely different he's a good actor he's got really good range yeah he does uh mostly when you don't recognize an actor mm. i think that's that, the best thing. that's how you know they have a good range uh just like the guy in uh universe guide to the galaxy you know i'm saying that title wrong something guide to the galaxy what guardians th- of the galaxy no uh thanks for all the fish oh uh hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy you know the guy with two faces Oh, yeah, that's freaking Sam Rockwell. You never recognize as, uh, him in films, but he's a great actor. Yeah, he yeah. He, he was in uh, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Oh, really? Most people forget what? that. It was one of his first roles. It was the, He was a part of the Foot Clan. Uh, that scene where all the kids are going to the Foot Clan headquarters for the first time, right before you see the Shredder. Oh, he's where the they're guy trying to recruit like, everyone? And he's like, whatever you want to do, do it. And then one of the kids is like, you got any cigarettes? And then he delivers his classic line, regular a menthol. That's Sam Rockwell <laughs> and Ninja fucking Turtles. Taking it back. The best comic book movie ever made. That's right. I'm saying it right here. The original 1990 Ninja Turtles with a close second being Sin City, in my humble opinion. So I want to bring it back to the, the fake racism of the Oscars. Yeah. I understand that people of different color feel excluded. I get mm-hmm. that. But I don't know what the answer is no like, there isn't like a good answer for it do like, you do you call back or just add some more nominees to make sprinkle in some color to make mm-hmm. everyone happy or, or is that you, just kissing ass or yeah are you just like whoops never mind what we really want doesn't matter we'll add mm-hmm. some in and we'll give away one fourth of those to those people too just you make shouldn't everyone... do it just to do it you should recognize talent and filmmaking where it deserves Look, simple man, as that fucking star wars shoved a lot of people like the, the main character was a black guy yeah. You know, like that's the most diverse Star Wars film ever. 
and and I hate when people talk about that though. To be perfectly honest, uh-huh. when they're like, "Oh, it's so great, Ray is a, a, a leading female character. She's a strong Finn, woman. Finn is Finn is a, a black character. He's one of the main." It's like I didn't even think about that when I was watching it. I just saw really interesting characters, and when people can start to have that mindset, and we stop caring about that shit. That's what really matters. I'm not going to kiss the movie's ass because of that. I liked those characters simply because they were interesting and I wanted to see where their stories were going. Yeah, and in The Revenant, look, it's a movie that takes place in like 1720. Mm -hmm. A black guy's not going to be with a whole white expedition Mm -hmm. in 1720. Had to have a white cast for that Mm -hmm. movie, you know, for the time period. I I mean... And and, and they they made it apparent, too, that like during that time period that uh, different races weren't exactly accepting of one another. There was like Indians that were like going to fuck you up if they mm. found you i mean you know? leonardo dicaprio's son like just his relationship with the other uh people on the expedition because he had a half indian son yeah like they didn't even treat him like he was human yeah but during that time period that's the way things were they weren't trying to sugarcoat anything or try to appeal to some sort of like social justice warrior agenda which i really applaud them for and i don't think that star wars was doing that i don't think that was their original intention they just found the best actors they found the people for the job and they made a really great choice and these people are going to be propelled to stardom from here yeah you want it they uh they could have made uh kylo ren uh, a woman or a guy of color, exactly. but they just found that Adam Driver, and he was mm-hmm. the best for it. Mm-hmm. A whiny teenager yeah. looking guy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the dude from Grandma's Boy. Wait, what? <laughs> no, the dude from Grandma's yeah. Boy. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking that dude! Please sit on my face. Oh my god, <laughs> I have a robot boner or whatever yeah. it was. No, that was what my uh, my friend Ben said. Like as we were leaving, this, I like Kylo Ren, but when he took off his mask, I totally just saw the dude from Grandma's oh. Boy. Oh, you know, the guy with the two offices that are epic, that oh, fucking God. techno song. I love that. His like his weird loft where everything's just like pristine and white. Yeah. And amazing. It's very weird. He has a little briefcase that has sushi in it. It's just it's, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. If you've never seen Grandma's Boy, you should totally check that movie out. Mm-hmm. It's quite good, actually. <laughs> it's not it's not art or anything. It's not as good as The Revenant. I love when we speak highly of shitty movies. <laughs> People are like, wait, I thought I was supposed to take your opinion seriously. And they're like, Grandma's Boy, that's where it's fucking at, man. Yeah, oh my God. That's where the deep story is. Please forgive us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But going back to the whole Oscar thing, again, mm-hmm. I'm not on anyone's side. I'm still, you know, I'm a firm believer the the, the best man wins, the best movie wins. Uh, at the end of the day, um, is there probably something going on that we don't know about? Maybe, but maybe not. We just we don't know. Uh, I'm not really even sure how they uh, do the uh, nominations for that. I know that an academy is involved, and there's like a board that makes these decisions. A board of white people. A board of white people. That's what's going <laughs> on. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. You know, just we're living in an age where a lot of people think that type of stuff is going away, but it's. Uh. If anything, more relevant now than ever. Um, I feel like the problem is yeah. everyone has a voice now. The internet is around. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing and a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Problem is there's no vetting process, so the idiots come right to the top just as much as the smart people. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the idiots that are the most persistent get you know the highest level of attention. And everyone's so fucking sensitive. And they, yeah. you know what? Everyone, if they just had to go out and fucking hunt for their food and have some real shit to deal with in their life, maybe they wouldn't spend their time getting pissed about the Oscars. You yeah. know, it's like life is too easy now. We have been sitting in a heated, warm, comfortable room in padded office chairs all day. And it is nice. And it almost snowed today outside. Yeah. And we're sitting here like drinking K-Cup hot cocoa. <laughs> we're, our life is so fucking easy right mm-hmm. now. And sometimes when people have an easy life, they need something to be pissed about because mm-hmm. we all know people that are just naturally negative. Mm-hmm. And I'm imagining if you average the human race, there's a lot of those people, even if it was just 10 percent, 8 percent of the human race was naturally negative. Mm-hmm. And then you give them access to the Internet and you give them a willpower to just communicate like assholes. And they just do, you know, and you don't even know if you're arguing with a 10 year old. You don't know, you <laughs> no, know. You don't. So anyway, the Internet is a funny thing. It'll all work out. Mm-hmm. I, I've said this a few times, but I think there will be no autonomy later in the Internet. Like, I feel like there will be like a number or something like assigned to everyone. Like you. Th- I thought that Facebook would have people not talk shitty because your name is right there. Mm-hmm. But still people do it. Yeah. So I'm not really sure if that's going to go away or if a, 
slowly but surely they're going to remove privacy in the internet. And no, I don't mean the government's going to know everything you do. Believe me, they already know everything if they really wanted to. But I just feel like privacy on the internet's going to go away and you're not going to be autonomous. And we'll see if that comes true in 10 more years. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. There's There needs to be some sort of vetting process before you have an opinion on everything. We'll see if that comes around. What else are we going to talk about? Sorry, got on my uh, high well, horse. Well, we've been talking so much about all these American movies and stuff. Let's let's talk about anime, which is Woo! something we don't talk about as much on the podcast anymore, which really bugs Kameha, me because we have a Meha. huge anime uh, audience. Uh, speaking of which, we were just talking about the most latest episode of Dragon Ball Super, which was a really fun episode because uh, it finally concluded the whole Frieza being resurrected arc. We got to see Vegeta wailing on Frieza, but also the next episode of the series is finally going to really be the true beginning of Dragon Ball Super. And before we uh, even got to that, we were discussing like what version of the whole Resurrection F arc did the whole Vegeta beating up Frieza better. Um, and you're a firm believer in the anime version of that. I thought that Dragon Ball Super, not Dragon Ball Re- Resurrection of F, the movie, mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Super was better yeah. uh, because the fight was longer mm-hmm. and Frieza came at Vegeta more and Vegeta beat his ass in more different ways. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I, I felt the sting of Frieza's defeat much stronger mm-hmm. in the anime. I didn't think the animation was as good, but... It was better. There were still some good moments, though. Like, yeah. I love that moment, like, initially, where Frieza tries to attack him constantly, tries to kick him. He ends up blocking it, punching him right in the face tries to knee so him, hard knee. that he just bounces on the ground once and then yeah. just completely wails on him from there. Um, but, yeah, it, it did a better job, uh, I'll admit, of, like, showing that Frieza was just defeated. There was nothing that he could do. Uh-huh. Uh, against Vegeta at that point. And you could tell that in a way, Vegeta wasn't being very vocal or even showing his emotion too much, but on the inside, you could tell that he was having a blast. That's one thing. It's not Vegeta's character to be emotional. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Vegeta... Unless he's around Beerus, in which case he has to be, otherwise he'll get killed. Yeah, but um, Vegeta died crying against Frieza. Mm-hmm. So I thought there would be more emotion there. Mm-hmm. You know, or like a speech. It's very uncommon in anime when someone's getting defeated for there to be no speech. Mm. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he said, you know, I'm not like Kakarot. I'm going to kick your ass, bro. Mm-hmm. And then he does. And that's it. I thought he would be like, this one's for my father. This is for my planet. You know, like none of that happened. And I kind of wish there was a little more emotional build there. Like even the way Dragon Ball Super handled the planet exploding was dark almost, mm-hmm. you know, like it shows everyone. And then slowly, you know, they all turn, turn into Terminator 2 where they're holding on their chain link fence. And they're... <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, it was just intense. And so I was like... Playground in the background. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Can you really scream if all your flesh is removed from your bones? I don't know. don't think about that. No, don't get into it. The point is, uh, I thought that Dragon Ball Super did a much better job with that episode. Mm -hmm. In my opinion. Um, I don't think it did a better job uh, in terms of the animation. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, just the movie version just one-ups it in terms of animation. Way better budget. Uh, You can't help that. But I do agree. I do like that they added a little bit more to the fight, even though it's pretty much stuff that we've just seen before. You know, just more of the same, um, you know, flying around, constant punches to the face. But the choreography was there. The impact was definitely there, which was probably the best thing about it. The last two episodes of Dragon Ball Super, uh, the attack scenes were really good because you just felt like, just the destruction behind every single punch, every single kick. Um, and that's what they did in this episode. Uh, I do prefer the movie version, and I'll still stick to my guns and say that if you want to enjoy this arc, see the movie version, because one, you're going to be able to blast through it in about an hour and a half. And it's almost nonstop action in the movie version compared to the anime version where things slow down just a tad, and of course you don't get as good animation. Um, one of the biggest things about that episode um, that most people are talking about is not even the Vegeta stuff is the fact that Gohan is going to train again. Now, I would be more excited for this if it wasn't for the fact that the next arc of the series makes it painfully clear that Gohan really isn't going to have a role to play unless there's going to be some sort of twist that we don't know yet. Like maybe one of Beerus's fighters has to be uh, removed. Like maybe Majin Buu isn't going to be able to do it and they have to replace him with another fighter is that going to be Gohan? We're going to have to wait and see. And if Gohan finally gets back to training, like really what is he going to do? Cause he's going to be training with Piccolo. And that makes sense. Cause 
Piccolo pretty much trained Gohan from the beginning. You know, he showed him exactly what it means to be like a warrior and how to fight. But Gohan is uh, stronger than Piccolo. Gohan's way stronger. Technically, he's way stronger than Piccolo. You know, they can use the old excuse, no, I haven't trained in a while. No, I've been focusing on my family and everything. But at the end of the day, this is the guy that, like, one-shotted all of the cells and practically defeated Cell in one shot. And then went on to train with, like, the fucking mystic gods of the universe and ended up obtaining superpower that could nearly defeat Majin Buu. And, and was at least on Super Saiyan 3 level. Exactly. Like, he was so obnoxiously powerful to the point where Super Saiyan didn't even need to be used. Um, and now it's sort of like going back to the drawing board with the character. But I do agree with a lot of people um, that Gohan does have the potential to return to being one of the strongest, if not strongest, characters of the series only due to the fact that from the beginning, from the Raditz saga, the beginning of Dragon Ball Z, this character has the ability to just take on these superpowered characters with no training whatsoever. In many senses, he's very similar to Frieza. Like, inherently from the beginning, he was just a destructive cannon. Yes. You know, like, all, and all he did when he fought against Raditz, too, was just get really pissed and headbutt him, and he really fucked Raditz up right there. Yeah. Like, that was a huge deal. Um, you know, he's gone toe to toe with like Frieza, like, and actually wailed on him for a little bit. Like there's just, there's so many moments in the series with Gohan. Um, so this would be a great opportunity to bring him back, whether he's going to be a part of the next arc, maybe one that precedes it. I don't really know. All then, I know is I am excited over the prospect that Gohan might not be such an annoying little bitch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, they also, um, have not touched on the fact, can a half blood Saiyan turn Super Saiyan God? Yeah, that's an interesting... have not touched on that. Now, to be fair, though, they did need Gohan to be a part of those Saiyans to create a Super Saiyan God. Yes. So I'd imagine it probably can work for him. Um, but the whole rules of Super Saiyan God are like... They make up their rules for that shit. You know, like how they needed to all come together to make uh, Goku turn into one. And then Vegeta goes to train with Beerus and Whis, and now he's a Saiyan god. He just gets it. Yeah, he just he, they they unlocked some other way of doing it. Maybe it's because maybe of their they, training. Maybe or the, we saw how it happened, so mm -hmm. he sort of understood how to help Vegeta do yeah, it. Be like, you know? here's a little tip: you can pull this off, and you can impress Goku with it. Yeah. Um, do you think that Vegeta was stronger than Goku uh, when he was fighting against Frieza? Uh, Frieza was pretty much done. But I mean, like, just in general, like, you know, their, where their power levels were, because they were hinting throughout that whole arc that Vegeta was just a little bit stronger. He has trained longer mm -hmm. than Goku did. He had like a six month head start. Yeah. Uh, but they're they've never there have been multiple moments in uh, Goku and Vegeta's training in these current arcs mm -hmm. where they train and they look even. Yeah. So comparing them on the Frieza fight is kind of a weird thing because mm -hmm. Goku and Frieza slowly ramped it up, and mm -hmm. then you know Goku got a, a dr he got drive by shot. You know, by one of his <laughs> yeah. goons and stuff. So Which, thank God they made a little more believable than the anime version. Why? Because he powered down first. Yeah. Okay. And he was a little more caught off guard when that happened. Because it is a little strange that a piece of technology could pierce through a Super Saiyan God body. Yes. You know, or even much less just Goku's normal body. Because like, he just, could stop bullets when he was a child. Yeah, but this thing, this laser beam from space. Laser. We just, we just have to assume that the technology that Frieza's army uh, has is just really advanced that it could do that. If that's the case, y'all should have brought, like, a bunch thousands of, <laughs> of those things, given them to all of the soldiers and just fire in multiple directions. One of them is eventually going to hit somebody. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, or they could have got like a shotgun version but of that. But it just wouldn't be Dragon Ball without some plot holes. That's just the way it is. It's a series that does what it wants, how it wants, and when it wants to. As much as I like Dragon Ball Z, man, with modern anime, like everything from One Punch Man to... Oh, it's easy to be spoiled. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's sort of like Dragon Ball Z is just... It's it's not a subpar thing, and the nostalgia keeps it very high on my list of anime I mm -hmm. like. But it's not the coolest anime I've ever seen anymore. No, it's just not. You know, so I got so spoiled by One Punch Man. <laughs> I hate that's that that's, that's so. what happened. Me and my friend Ben, we, we usually have anime nights every week, and uh, when we were rewatching all this stuff, uh, we would watch One Punch Man, and then right after that, we would watch the new episode of Dragon Ball Super, and he would always, <laughs> he would always comment. He's like. Damn, it's like that One Punch Man episode was so cool, and I want Dragon Ball to be that too. Yeah. Like, I want it to be on that level, but it's just, it doesn't have the budget for that. It's just, it's not going to happen. Um, and even I'll say that, like, the original Dragon Ball Z, I still think it looked better, and there were only so many episodes of the original series that had, like, really, really special animation to the But didn't fight they scenes. produce it much slower? They Didn't it kind of come out, like, in seasons? It's, it's hard to say because, no, 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 it, it was 
consecutive, like from beginning to end. No oh, breaks, okay. Always. Except for like holidays and stuff. Okay. Um, it's just the difference was with that series, uh, the reason it was a little slower is because it was also going when the manga was running at the same time. Um, so they had to do that kind of like what they're doing with one piece nowadays. Um, now they don't have really that baggage anymore. There is a manga version of Dragon Ball Super, but it's clearly doing its own thing, but it's still following the same basic guidelines and using the same characters that we know of. Maybe they're going to make a big change in the anime version because there are a lot of new characters who are about to pop up. Um, maybe they'll be hinted at in the next episode. I doubt it. I think they're going to take their time. Uh, with getting to all of that. Um, but uh, final thing that I want to talk about, because we were just talking about One Piece, uh, we just got the Gear 4th episode of Whee! One Piece. And holy crap, would you believe that it's been like a year and a half since the Dressrosa arc started in the anime version? No. Yeah. It's been going on. If you're a One Piece fan, long. you're okay with time moving slowly. <laughs> okay. That's for damn sure. You're okay with time um, moving slowly. I will say it's it's without a doubt the best part of the Dressrosa arc. Oh yeah. I mean, there's hands down. I'd say next to this, probably my favorite thing Zoro? was uh, mm, no, not even that. I was gonna say uh, Sanji and Trafalgar Law fighting against Doflamingo. Their fights with him, I thought, were uh, really good. What about uh, the guy with one leg against uh... Kiro's first D Diamante was pretty good. There yeah. were certain parts I liked more. Um, I actually liked their initial scuffles more than their final battle. The one thing I'm 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 just over Doflamingo for some reason. He's not because we're reading the manga. Yeah, and, yeah, and we're we're reading the next arc. And we're like, oh, this guy who we thought was going to be one of the biggest, but uh, he's just a fucking, he's a loser compared to some of the guys we see. Yeah. Later he's a on. tool, but the, the, that's the other thing. It's sort of, uh, it's sort of, um, I just, this fight is interesting to me, but maybe it's because like Doflamingo wears sunglasses or something, but I feel like his, you want to see his emotions. Through his yeah. Eyes. I don't see any emotion. What I see is a guy that gets a new scratch mark drawn on his face. <laughs> what I see is a guy, that his big puffy, stupid outfit is still always perfect. You know, mm -hmm. like, I, I don't see battle damage when I see Doflamingo. Mm. And to be I fair, see... he does use hockey to, to like you know, stop hits Like that stuff. scene in the episode where Luffy uses Gear Forth um, when he hits him with the Rhino Schneider, which is the big kick move. Oh, yeah. Um, when he does that, uh, you can see that Doflamingo actually has hockey on his face yeah. to slightly protect him when he gets hit by that attack. That doesn't Basically really so he just doesn't get his skull cracked in. Yeah. But it still sends him flying like halfway across the Dressrosa kingdom. And it's obvious. The problem is I just feel like uh, throughout this fight – it just doesn't just all of a sudden Doflamingo gets defeated, you know, like it's just There's still more to the fight. Yes. This is not the end. And Doflamingo still has some very big surprises up his sleeve. Yes. Um, but this episode right here was just it was pure and simple. This was like Goku going Super Saiyan or Naruto this is a transportation, trans not transportation, transformation episode. Yeah, it's one of those iconic episodes that you remember. I want to set, talk about the transformation. One, yeah. I love the way it looks. Oh, yes. it's it's like. You see the uh, you see the hockey all over him, but he also has that red tint to him. Mm -hmm. That and was that, my favorite thing is the color. The color, it I looked love very the red good. and black. It looks so cool. And uh, also, I like how he has to flip off his uh, sandals. He's like, I don't need these, you know. <laughs> and then uh, I love the way the sound effects work when he bounces. You know, yeah. He's like boing, boing, boing. I just love the fact that he has to bounce. Yeah. Um, that was a detail for some reason I never really picked up on in the manga. Oh yeah, like I understood. He would constantly he, have to. He has, he has to, to move. keep moving, basically, is what it is. Yeah. Um, but just seeing it in the anime version just made me realize how ridiculous it is. I also love the details of how he flies around Dressrosa and how he's basically in mid air while all that air is constantly being compressed in his legs and pushed out, kind of like an engine. Or very much like Sanji kicks the ground. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, he has a very much uh, he's skywalking yeah. pretty when much. I when I reviewed it in my uh, anime version I, I compared it to Gamera Gamera, Gamera oh, flies around God. yeah <laughs> that's what it reminded me of Gamera mm -hmm. no, it's a it's a good way to put it actually but I fucking loved that episode it was definitely what I've been waiting to see like you said the the transformation sequence was great just so beautifully animated the color was amazing I love the fact that you know, maybe maybe Luffy made it to be this way. Like, he actually kind of goes, like, into a kabuki mode, like, when he does it. He even yeah. talks kind of like a kabuki guy, like, when he does, like, the gear. Forza! <laughs> like, he does all that, like, Jiraiya shit. And it's just, it's so over the top and crazy. The attacks are really cool. The, the Kong gun was really cool that sent him flying. The Rhino Schneider kick, that big python punch at the very end. Yes. How it ricochets, like, off of different parts of the sky, just constantly, like, going right into Doflamingo's face, ripping through his fire and everything. Like, that whole sequence is fantastic. And it's still just the beginning of their fight, too. But 
this is definitely, to me, so far the most iconic episode of the Dressrosa arc. And damn it, more like this, please. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down to see this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they got one more episode, and then, you know, they'll go into the next part of the, the series, um, and then they'll get back to it again. But and like probably uh, the newest thing I felt from One Piece so far. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, we've waited a year and a half for this, Corey. Yeah. We, we should get something new. <laughs> yeah. like it, just, it feels like this is what it's been building up to, is like this moment right here. But also since like the whole time skip, it's like, this is what I've been waiting for. Luffy finally has to get serious about something. Yes, he got pushed to a corner. He can't just punch his way out. He mm -hmm. had to transform, you know. Technically, he could have done this against Hody Jones, too. He didn't need to, though. He didn't need to. You know, yeah. he's kind of like Goku in that sense. He didn't want to reveal his trump card quite yet. Yeah, he had had uh, he had saved it. Mm -hmm. It also says something about how powerful that flipping island must have been that he lived on. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, because even when we saw him train with uh, Riley, he punched that elephant and just bounced off of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so it obviously was those creatures are some sort of on like weird abnormal level of powerful that we don't even realize. Maybe. Yeah. So it's it's, it's definitely strange and interesting. But yeah, I'm a super big fan of what uh, what just you know what happened in the last episode. I think that uh, uh, I want to see more of Gear Fourth, and we haven't seen it mm -hmm. all the way even in the manga that we're at now. But I could imagine it would be a cool thing to see against some of the new villains we're hearing mm -hmm. introduced. You know, again though, it's a, it's another one of those abilities like where you use it. There's like repercussions, like your body's gonna get destroyed. You're not gonna be able to move or like power up for a long period of time. So it is kind of a risky move to use. You could say that. And I agree, but at the same time, I bet Luffy can train train that out. Oh, it's going to happen eventually. Where he just know? like can just use it's it. It's just like in Naruto, where Rock Lee developed that move, the uh, the Lotus Attack, where he would wrap someone up and then slam them into the ground. Uh -huh. Initially, it's like, oh, d if you do that too many times, you're going to die. What does Rock Lee do 90% of the time when he defeats someone? He uses that technique. What does he do 90% of the time after that? Open all the gates all the time. Exactly. That's like Same his... thing for uh, for Naruto, even. like Initially, they're like, oh, you don't want to mm -hmm. use the Kyuubi's powers. You don't want to do that that's the the path to evil and it'll destroy your body halfway in the series oh by the way you might want to learn how to use that fucking <laughs> kyubi it oh remember save your ross ass and, and shuriken can't use that that'll destroy your cells yeah your arm will be fuck it he throws those things constantly <laughs> he throws them twice while throwing beast balls you know like <laughs> exactly just, yeah it's just uh you know, they, they'll they, train that out dragon ball isn't the only one uh without you know going against this rules every other series does it yeah, so it's not it's not that crazy. Mm. But uh yeah, Corey, awesome podcast. Thank you uh for making this one with me, man. Mm -hmm. But let's uh let's get out of here and let's uh tell everyone about our Rogue Intel sponsors. Yes. Uh thank you guys again for watching today. We really appreciate it. We are sorry there is no video today, but we have a, a lot of things on our plate. We're extremely busy, but thank you for tuning in. Uh before we wrap up everything, I just want to go ahead and take a moment to thank our network Rogue Intel. Yes, Rogue Intel gives us the ability to speak our minds, which is pretty freaking awesome. So make sure to check out the other shows at RogueIntel.com. And if you want to help keep the network going, head over to RogueIntel.com slash Amazon for all of your shopping needs. Whatever you are picking up, it doesn't cost you any extra, and a portion of your total will go towards the Rogue Intel network and all of its shows. Yeah, you guys, thank you so much for uh, watching and uh, commenting. We do really appreciate every comment we get about the show. It does help us improve the show and make it better. Uh, if you guys have any, uh, topic ideas that you want us to talk about, let us know as well. And until next time, the powerful Nerdcast is out. Share it with your friends or we'll hunt you down. It's a promise. Play for keeps. Play for keeps. <laughs>